Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed the video about the Sonic uh, McDonald's toys. Uh, but now, if you have a Dollar Tree in the area, now is the time to pop in because a new wave of Final Faction just popped up. If you have $11.25 plus sales tax, wherever it applies, then you can get the entire new wave of Final Faction um, stuff. Which consists of a new vehicle, this one is for the Karn. Um, a weapon accessory pack for that vehicle. Two new minions, a, a robot for the, uh, for Alpha Team, and the Decimator for the, uh, for the Karn. And four new figures, uh, which, it, which include two new members of Alpha Team and one, and two new members of the Karn. So yes, new Karn figures. I was kind of disappointed that they didn't have any in the last wave, but here we go. So let's get these guys out of the packaging and uh, start talking about them one by one. Up first is the Combat Specialist Amari. Uh, apparently there is an additional weapons pack for the Alpha Team in this wave. I did not see one there. Maybe I'll pop in next time. Uh, so just like all the others, Amari has a... Uh, the back of her of her blister pack has uh, has um, this thing that you can cut out to turn it into a trading card. Uh, let's see. She comes from the United States, and uh, her her description is: Amari is an Alpha Team soldier from New York City who uses her size and strength in battle. Amari fights for her family, proudly wearing her father's Air Force bomber jacket, and her weapon of choice. She will use anything at her disposal, but her favorite weapon is her modified baseball bat she names Slugger. It hits a home run every time. So yay, let's get her out of the package and take a look at her figure. So here she is out of the packaging, and uh, it's good to see that we have a second female member of the team, because, uh, you know, like, like the first wave had like their token, and then it's kind of been a long time since we've seen another. Uh, so, um, just like any of the old Kenner figures, this thing just has four, five basic points of articulation. You got swivel hips, you have swivel shoulders, and a swivel head. This isn't like a super heavily articulated figure, but remember, it only costs $1.25, so it's not exactly shooting for the moon here. Uh, because of the sculpt of her butt, her legs actually don't go backwards, so you aren't going to get her like uh, doing a doing a splits. But she can sit so that she can get into that um, into the final faction vehicle if you want her to. Um, let's uh, take a zoom in to capture all of her sculpted detailing. Uh, so yeah, she she has her her mohawk picked out, although it doesn't really go quite to her scalp. Uh, pretty basic face job. It's not like they give her irises or pupils or anything. Um, and aside from being picked out in a very nice glossy gold for her jacket, uh, the rest of the figure's paint job is very basic. Um, it actually looks like she's supposed to be wearing gloves the way her hands are sculpted, but they're just painted her skin tone. I guess they couldn't they couldn't budget in that last little bit of black paint for them. Um, but aside from that, all the rest of the sculpted detailing is pretty good. Um, I feel like a customizer like me, if I were so inclined, could actually give this a pretty uh, good paint job. And on my Reddit thread, I've actually seen some people do some pretty good work making uh, Final Faction customs. Uh, her weapon is the bat. Um, any Walking Dead fans out there might say that this is like Lucille's little brother. Uh, and it's kind of weird that the handle is so thin that it doesn't really go in her hands. I do notice that... Note that her fingers are sculpted as if she's supposed to be holding a gun with a separated trigger finger. So even though her primary weapons handle does not have um, a trigger on it, now if you if you put yeah, if you she can grip it right on the very end of the nub where the where the handle gets a little bit thicker. Um, but you know that's not the proper way to wield a baseball bat. But still, she can technically hold her weapon, and it's nice to see that her hands are sculpted to hold other weapons, so she's not really typecast in her one weapon type. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so let's move on to one of the car, and let's go back and forth between the factions here. Alright, this is a big guy. This is Diabol, or maybe Diabol, and uh, he, 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 I'm getting some kind of Doom vibes from the, from the pink here, but we'll wait until we get out of the packaging for that. 
Uh, Diabol. Um, as always, the back is a card. Queen Malera's most trusted general. Ooh, so we have a name for the leader of the Karn, Queen Malara. I would like to see a toy of Queen Malara. <clears throat> Diabol is a ruthless mastermind who never fails. While Diabol prefers to dictate the rules of engagement from his command center, he has no fear of the battlefield and is happy to engage his enemy in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Diabol is a brutal warrior who uses his spiked and armored limbs in combat. Adorned with bones of his enemies, this juggernaut is unstoppable. Yeah, pretty good. Let's get him out of the packaging and see what the figure itself is like. Diabol comes with no accessory, but compensates for it by being freaking huge. Uh, like, here he is next to Amari, who, remember, is kind of tall for a final faction member, and she is significantly shorter than this guy by at least a head. Um, so again, there's not much to his articulation. Uh, the way his head is attached means that turning it actually makes him cock it to the side rather than looking back, looking left and right. And he only has swivel cuts for his shoulders and his hips. Um, but, you know, like the, like, the sculpt work just makes up for it. Like, he looks like he is made out of raw meat. Uh, like, I'm, I'm seriously getting some Cyber Demon vibes from Doom. Like, this guy just looks very intimidating. Like, his chest looks like... it. At the same time, it looks like a bear skeleton and like he has gigantic pectoral muscles. Uh, there is some paint detailing on his arm with like... Uh, um, some leather straps picked out in brown paint underneath uh, huge shoulder pads which have like a streaky white paint job on there I guess to make them look scuffed and used as armor um, and like most of the Karn his paint job has been made extra glossy so that he looks like he's wet uh, like like he's covered in slimy ichor um, like from from his gigantic uh, claw demon toes. Holy crap, man. Um, all the way to his hor horrifying three-fingered talon hands. Uh, you can see the sculpted work. Uh, he even has some peg holes, so um, the weapon accessory pack probably has something I can peg into there. Um, although I think I see a screw at the bottom of the hole, so that it might just be a... No, no. Yeah, there's a screw inside of there. I can barely see it. So that might just be like um, his arms could be assembled that way, but I don't know, maybe. Uh, but yeah, Diabol, uh, he, he's a huge figure and he looks very cool. Um, and uh, again, with the, with the five points of articulation for $1.25, that's pretty much all you can ask of him. And yes, it does look like his hands are sculpted in such a way that he can hold the Karn weapons from the... Uh, like the accessory pack from the first wave. So even if you don't find the weapon pack for this wave, you you have options. Moving back to the heroic alpha team, we have Riptide. Um, let's see. Riptide is a skilled combat and rescue diver from New England. You know, like uh, New England is like it, it's like the Northeast United States. I'm pretty sure New York is one of them. Also like Connecticut, Massachusetts, Maine, you know, those kinds of places. Like, like we, we have one, like we, we have um, um, a, a, a Amari from New York and uh, this guy is also from the same area. Uh, but then again, I guess um, there is a big fishing tradition in the American Northeast, so I guess I will allow it. Uh, let's see. When he's not fishing or indulging in canned tuna, I just, I swear I completely forgot about that part of the description before I said the fishing tradition thing. <laughs> he spends his free time helping the local wildlife. Now, of course, the free diver guy is going to be the, uh, the eco hero that, that he's kind of typecast as that. Uh, weapon of choice, Riptide's two forearm mounted harpoons help him ensnare the enemy. He also uses water activated sensors to warn him of nearby car and activity. Alright, so this sounds like a, a specialist who would come in to help with uh, uh, particular missions rather than being a permanent member of the team. So let's get him out of that packaging and see how he is. Alright, this guy looks pretty cool. 
I mean, there's no sparkling gold paint on him, but it does look like he has a more detailed paint job than the other figures. Um, his little diving watch things are picked out in green. And you can see they even painted these little knives that he has on his thighs. I mean, it's kind of weird the way they curve along with the sculpt of his thigh, but hey, that's for a dollar twenty-five. that's pretty good. Um, not much done in his back. You can see there's a lot of straps and stuff that they could have painted, but they didn't. Although it's not like his back is completely bereft of paint detailing as the straps on his thighs are still there, as well as his boots. And uh, he even has little, the little thrusters on his boots that would allow him to swim faster. Which, which I, I, I like this because if it wasn't for like these thrusters to help him move faster underwater, they probably would have given him swimming flippers, which would look really silly because those are pretty much useless outside of, um, of the, you know, the water. Uh, his, his head actually has a pretty decent paint job going on. He has a mustache and eyebrows all picked out very nicely. Little tiny goatee there. Uh, his hair job is, is pretty cool. And he has three accessories. One of which is clearly this diving mask, which um, I'm assuming you just kind of put over his face and then it pegs into his chest. Yeah, that works. That's, that, that's, that is really convincingly on there. Like, like, it actually wraps around the back of his head so it looks like a mask that's actually being held in place. Yeah, good on them. And look, the accessory even has a little bit of its own paint detailing. They, most of the accessories don't have any paint, but this one does. And then his weapons are, they say these are supposed to be form. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Um, I'm assuming they're hoping that you'll provide your own string because there is a little hole in the harpoon and a hole in the weapon itself. So if you provide a string, you can have like that grappling harpoon thing that they say he has. And I believe you peg them on this way. Yes, that looks about right. Oh, look. You can see the de the sculpted detailing of like the coiled up uh, filament line that's supposed to be the wires. So yeah, pretty cool. And they this adds to the part count. Even though it's only two accessories, it's four parts. So yeah, for a dollar twenty-five, this is a really good little bit of kit. They like there's legitimately quite a lot in there. So you know, good on you, Riptide. You actually go above and beyond for such a inexpensive little toy. And now we move on to the last of the Karn figures for this wave, well, last of the humanoid figures of this wave, Crepitus. Um, this is uh, pretty, another another uh, big tall boy as all the guys are. This guy's a bounty hunter. So uh, Crepitus is a relentless bounty hunter. He's tasked with eliminating loose ends for the Karn. Crepitus has no sympathy for his targets. He is only focused on the task at hand and will do anything to complete it. His latest bounty is that of the defector, Torn. Hey, hey, Lore, this is a nemesis for Torn. And it actually kind of confirms that Torn is a good guy for this series. Because, like, um, when when he was introduced and as literally a two-faced character, I kind of figured that this might be a guy who pretends to work for Final Faction but is actually a traitor. But no, he was originally a plant by the by the um by the Karn, and he betrayed them to help humanity. Uh, that makes this guy really mysterious. It's so does that mean that he actually originally was a Karn who had his appearance altered to look human, or he's a shapeshifter who can who can do this, and he chose to defect and help the humans instead? That's a really that's really interesting. That that could be a complex backstory for this guy. But I digress. Crepitus uses his jagged arm blades, enhanced with poison, to eliminate his targets. His companion, Flea, helps scout out and find targets quietly. Uh, Crepitus is a pretty gangly looking guy. Um, although he is still quite tall, like he's almost as tall as, um, as what's his face, uh, Maladus? Uh, Diabol. He's almost as tall as Diabol, although he is much thinner and lankier. Um, I do like how they gave him like a uh, predator dreadlocks. Uh, that's that's kind of a cool feature that that's always cool on your alien hunter guys. And he's adorned with gold. Like I guess I guess they just had gold paint budgeted for this wave, but he wears it pretty well, especially like picked out in three distinct bands here on his arm. Um, 
Yeah, it's it's a fairly simple paint job, but it is effective with the way it's used. He also has like a his face looks like a skull, but st also is also it still looks like he has a beard. That's kind of cool. And uh, there is a, a certain height and intimidation factor he has over his supposed nemesis Torn. Um, in fact, to to uh, to continue with the parallelisms, um, his weapons are similar to Torn's, like. The pegs are very long, but yeah, these huge poison arm blades. Oh, I love that they actually sculpted them in this gnarly looking green. That's that's really cool. Like, it's the same kind of weapon that Torn uses. I mean, it's way more vicious looking, but it it's the same weapon. It's forearm mounted blades. So like, that, that actually goes to show a parallelism between uh, the hero and his nemesis. Like, that's... That's really good. That works. Um, I'm very, very happy to see them put this much thought into like this, into like their character symbology. Um, yeah, I mean, it it, it kind of sucks that the way the arm, the hands are sculpted. Like it's it's hard to get his arms properly at his sides. Like, eh. like you can, I guess you can put them behind him like that. Like he looks like he has his arms crossed behind him pensively. Um, but yeah, uh, this. He still has quite a bit of range, um, and you can do all kinds of cool stuff with him, even though he only has like the, the five points of articulation. At least his head can actually convincingly look left and right instead of just kind of cocking to the side like di like Diabol's does. Uh, so yeah, pretty, pretty good. Uh, and then there, of, of course, is Flea. He's like a, he kind of reminds me of one of those skin parasites from Pacific Rim. Uh, he has little mandibles here on the front, uh, little little legs. Uh, is there a place where he can mount? Um, yeah, yeah. Look at the the inside of his stomach has a divot, and I think yeah, boom! You can put him on his shoulder. Oh, that's so cool! Like he can actually carry his little minion around on his shoulder. So like this isn't just a tiny piece of plastic that can get lost. It's an actual accessory that attaches to the figure. That's really cool. All right, so those are the four main characters of the wave, but we all, of course, know that I'm barely halfway through. So let's take a look at the other stuff that this comes with. That that's in this wave, I should say. Going back to Final Faction, we have the automated drone, P-131. Uh, the description here, the P-131 drones were developed and built by Boyd. Uh, the drones are used extensively in combat and rescue operations where the Alpha team would, could be outnumbered. Uh, deploying the P-131 drones helped to even the odds. Uh, the P-131 drone is equipped with a dual 90mm M54 cannons, built-in thrusters give the drone added mobility to get those to, to get to those hard to reach areas. Uh, so um, like this this is the this is the crest gel that can defeat the cavity creeps that are the uh, the carn. <laughs> the carnvity creeps. That no, that sucked. Yeah, if you were going to ask me what a military soldier drone looked like, I'd say it was this. Uh, this looks like a mech. I rem This seems like something that you would see on um, Exo Squad or something to that effect. Uh, let's see, like you can rotate the cannons around so you can shoot in all kinds of directions. The head is technically a separate piece, but it doesn't really turn very well. Like, you can wiggle it, but it's not like you can make it look left and right. And the legs, like, like you can kick up, but that... Like, given, given the way they're sculpted, it looks kind of silly. But, you know what? Again, these things aren't designed for super articulation. They're just, they're just designed to, to look cool. And this thing does. Um, he has a glossy pink job, which, makes, which does a, a pretty good job of making it look a great deal more metallic. Um, but unlike the other robot toys in this series, there don't really seem to be many peg holes to mount extra armaments on. Um, there's a couple, like there's some back here on the shoulders, and these look like a couple back on the shins. But compared to everything else, like there's nothing on the front, nothing on the sides. Like I'm guessing maybe they're gonna like um, make a, you can put the flight pack wings on here to make a flying drone. But that's about all I can really think. I mean, you can also put the rockets on here, but that's, that would just help with the flying mode. Uh, but yeah, like aside from making this thing able to fly, uh, there really doesn't seem to be much of a way to kit this guy out. 
Uh, still, just as he is, he's a pretty cool looking little mech thing. And he's tiny. He is way shorter than the human characters. These things, these things will probably be outright adorable on the battlefield until they start cutting things in half with these gigantic machine gun turrets they have for arms. But still, like, it's cool to have, um, like, I can, I can see getting a bunch of these to army build, especially since they're physically smaller. This actually seems like something that would make sense to have a whole bunch of. All right, and now here is the last figure in the set. The Perimeter Defense Decimator. A defense turret that is as strong as a rhino. A decimator is a living weapon, ruthless in pursuit of opponents. Decimator delivers a deadly blow with its spore strike. And um, I'd like to point out here, if you look down at the bottom, um, I did not see whatever this thing is. They call it a Huntra. I did not see that in the store. That could be a, a tantalizing hint at the next wave, or maybe they just happen to sell out of the thing. And um, the X4 turret, like that looks like something that, that Final Faction will use. Like Hunter and X4, haven't seen these two. But, oh, you know, this guy looks pretty cool on his own, so let's get him out of the package. So here is our living turret out of the packaging. Um, that's... That's a death flower. I'm gonna be I'm, I'm gonna be very generous and say that it looks like a flower and not what I think it could look like. Um, the four legs can swivel, so I'm guessing like it can put its arms in front of itself to protect its central mass. Um, although like this one has a tendency to disarticulate, you can see like there's little nubs. Like it it at first I thought it was a ball joint, but it's not. It's just a swivel connection, and it's and like. This arm, the one that was facing outward in the packaging, wants to fall off all the time. But this arm is very sturdily in there and does not fall. Um, but either way, like it's stable enough that it can at least stand. The the leg in the back does slightly wiggle side to side, but not by much. The turret head on top can swivel. And here's something interesting. Yeah, that is a spring-loaded missile. A real, actual, factual spring-loaded gimmick. Yeah, and it shoots a decent distance, too. Uh, like, I would have expected for a dollar twenty-five, like, a crappy pressure missile. Like, you would have to flick it from behind. But this is legitimately, like... Ah. Yeah, that's a legit actual firing projectile that works. If only this stupid leg didn't keep falling out. I would say that this is pretty... This is a, it's a pretty amazing figure. Like, again, for, it is still quite good. Like, I would say 10 out of 10 if that leg didn't keep falling out. But it's still, like, a solid 8. Yeah. So, yeah, solid 8. Um, did not expect a real spring-loaded missile firing gimmick. I mean, I've seen Transformers. That, Transformers doesn't even do that anymore. Like, wow. So all that leaves now is the vehicle for the wave. Um, this time, the, the, first, the first vehicle was for Final Faction. The second one is for the Karn. Um, it's this kind of two-wheel tank called the Rumbler. And the weapon accessory pack, which kind of makes it look a little bit like a scorpion. Um, so let's see, the back of the box shows uh, exoskeleton, anti-infantry lasers, earth core melter, uh, rumbler vertebrae wheel wheels. Oh, so these are like the spine of a creature. Cool. And then uh, armored scorpion whip and armored thrasher claws. Two of them. So yeah, let's let's get this thing out of the box and take a look at it. Okay, so there was some assembly required, but here it is out of the box. Uh, looking quite a bit bigger than I thought. This thing is like the size of a decent grapefruit or maybe a softball. Um, yeah, like, has some good painted detailing, the same little, uh, alien space flower. Yes, that's what I'm gonna call. Even has, like, eyes. This thing looks like it, it was the face of a living creature at one point. Uh, has really big bone wheels. And from the box, I thought it was a two-wheeler, but it's actually a three-wheeler. Uh, the wheels, like, they just kind of clip into place, and they don't, they turn, but they don't exactly spin very well. So, like, yeah, like, as you can see, like, this little table I have, it doesn't produce enough friction to get the wheels to actually turn. I feel like this will work better on a carpeted surface or a rougher floor. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. Um, it, it's only $1.25 and it's actually pretty big for the size. 
On the box, they show uh, D-Ball, um, Diabol. Um, this guy, isn't it? Uh, so let's see. You, I'm assuming you just kind of put him into a sitting position and get him in there. Um, derp de -do. Is that it? Did I did I do it? I, yeah. Yes. Yeah, and yep, that is most certainly a big pink horrifying monster sitting in a car. Um. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he does not look like he's driving Miss Daisy. He looks. Like, th this looks like a He-Man vehicle. Uh, now, I'm curious. Can you put any of the carn in here? Let's... Oop, I dropped the flea. Let's see if I can put Mr. Bounty Hunter in. Okay. Up. Up. Uh, yeah, it still works. Yep. You can pretty much put any carn in there. And look, this thing actually comes up high enough to be a passable windshield. So it would be protecting him from incoming fire. That works. Totally works. Yep, yep. So yep, yeah, it succeeds as a vehicle for the carn in that you can put more than just the one character in it. And of course you have the accessory pack sold separately. So now let's turn this into a $2.50 toy. Um, there is a peg hole back here that you put this scorpion tail in. Okay. Doesn't go very deep, but it uh, goes on stably. And then, um, uh, which one is the, which one is the left and which one is the right? I'm assuming, I'm assuming they go this way. Let me see if I push... Yeah, if it, if I push them in this way, then then they line up with the with the whole. Eh. Lots of friction there. Yeah. Huh. That kind of makes it all front heavy. Can I rotate these things? Um. What am I doing here? Am I, am I doing this right? Uh, what am I? Wait, did I get them on the wrong sides? Do they go this way? No, if I go, if they go that way, they don't. No, they they have to go this way. Oh, oh, okay, we're interrupting. Okay, there we go. I was putting them in sideways. I was I was kind of thinking like they'd be a pincher that goes like this, but they're actually like praying mantis claws. And yeah, with combined with that and the scorpion tail, uh, that, that's cool. That's a very intimidating vehicle. Although like, uh, that third wheel doesn't really touch the ground anymore. It's a bit front heavy. Although like, I suppose if you're playing with it, you'll be holding it down. But yeah, that's, let's get the, let's get a driver back in there. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I am. Oh, when you put the rider in, then he provides a good counterbalance to the claws, so the vehicle stays properly mounted. All right, that's that's epic. That looks cool. Okay, I am I am with you now. That is most certainly an excellent vehicle for this thing to be in. Like, I really can't imagine this Hellspawn driving anything else, frankly. And that is the current wave of Final Faction figures. Uh, so, if you have 1125 plus sales tax burning a hole in your pocket, why don't you go out there and collect the toy line that you can completely collect on a child's allowance. Um, yeah, like super low cost, but still pretty darn great. Uh, this is Wake Angel 2001 signing off.